today's Urbandum video, we find ourselves in an old abandoned bank in the middle of Manchester, dating back to the late 1920s. The towering structure, consisting of six floors, still boasts dated architecture, coated in dust that has been preserved for decades. In the never-ending vaults beneath the city streets, we come across World War II-era documents left behind. Join us as we venture within the building to see what timeless artefacts remain. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Today's video is sponsored by Craftfuel. They sent us their Alto 1200 portable power station to review on our channel, so we took it to a woodland at night to test it out as source for our projector. With 1200 watts output, this is up there with the best power banks we have seen, boasting 9 outlets of various types that can be used simultaneously. It is a perfect way to live your best life outdoors, which is incredible for us. It was a snowing frenzy on our chosen night, and somebody left the SD card with our films on at home. But at least the Craftfuel power station was reliable, powering our projector for hours in the cold without fault. We even noticed more features, such as wireless phone charging and an option to recharge the bank by solar panel. We will leave a link in the description if you would like to purchase a Craftfuel power station, because we have simply fallen in love. Thank you to Craftfuel for sponsoring this video. Located in a progressive area of Manchester, surrounded by new developments and construction sites, the bank is noticeably older than its neighbours. The ornate sandstone exterior connotes wealth and pride, surviving unscathed since its erection in 1928, when it became the city's home to a notorious banking business for over a century. Besides one or two boarded windows, the complex doesn't appear disused, with few signs of vandalism and no overgrowth on its walls. However, we knew otherwise after reading reports of the site's restoration online. On a bright summer's day, we managed to access the property, excited to see if the inside matched the detailed exterior. Inside this abandoned bank in a city, it's a lot more peely than I would have expected from the outside. But this room's completely empty. This old lettering on the door. Perhaps a sign of what's to come. Wow. Good grief. This is some special architecture. I didn't anticipate for this to be remaining. Especially in this good a condition, there is no vandalism at all. Look at those chandeliers. What a start it had been to the exploration. Moments after entering the facility, the bank provided some incredible intricate architecture, perfectly maintained and hardly decaying. This was the grand entrance hall, where customers would have come into the business to deposit their money or take it out, as well as inquire for loans. Look at these guys. Two statues, protected by this doubled Harrow's fence. Surprised they've just been left out in the open, but you can see the um, the stand they probably would have sat on behind them. 
noticeable renovation work had visibly occurred at some stage, with construction materials dotted about everywhere, but unfortunately it seemed that it had been stalled for the time being. Inside some of the small rooms leading off from the lobby, they look quite modernised. I love the detail in the glass panels on the doors and the windows. Just notice this huge door. Wow. Look at the size of the vaults, everything is enlarged. So thick. And there's definitely a vault. And I'd think that with the size of this bank probably won't be the only one we see. Connects into this other room here. Oh. This thing is heavy, to say the least. Oh, my God. Oh, it's coming back. Jesus. Must be on some sort of mechanism where it stays open. I'm not sure what that would be. It's swaying a little bit. I'm not surprised with its weight. Very, very cool. This is the room I could see through the smaller vault. Really nice windows. But not much else. Again, it looks quite modernised. And all this stuff that's in here. Really don't know what this is. Looks like it's a woodwork shop. And that door there leads back into the main foyer. Obviously things must have been passed through into this room, but not too sure what. I literally have to lean back to open it though. You can see all the inner workings there. Like most sites built in this period, the interior was confusing, probably with additions constantly being developed over the years. We were finding small, tight staircases all over the place, most of which only took us to dead ends. Alright, here's another vault. This one's slightly smaller. It's still got the crest on it though. It's a larger room too. Going underground now. I think the power's on. Yeah. It's all construction lights, but it still gives a completely different atmosphere. This is a vault as well. Look at the size of this one. Apparently this is the business information unit. But these cupboards look so much more dated than the ones upstairs. This cupboard, although it's a tight squeeze, is filled with 
placeholders for people's files. Each folder has a different location name on it. And the bottom down here, there's a few sheets of paper that would be copied around and sent. Really old signs here. And this as well. Just how about the font of this? From 20, 30 years ago. Looks like the cover of a small book or manifesto. It's been sold for one shilling. That's how you know it's dated. Most of these papers were way older than we thought whilst exploring, which is strange considering in all other areas of the bank, no furniture or belongings had been left. It appeared that the underground vaults had been disused for years, and in the bank's closing stages, it had only used the smaller, more modern vaults upstairs. We weren't complaining though, after citing old receipts, statements, and other documents that looked to be relics from a wartime era. Assisted by the construction lighting, we spent a long time below ground, searching every nook and cranny for interest. More and more smaller vaults. Completely void of anything though. 1969 dates inside. These are all checks. From the 70s. £10. I wonder how much that was back in the day. These ones here look a lot older. 4th of October 1945. Oh my god. That's for 668. So this is the bottom of the staircase. Temporary refuge area. I don't like anything in here. Oh, I was going the wrong way. Well, from my knowledge of this building, we're going under the road now, away from it. I'm hoping for some sort of air raid shelter or quarantine zone. Joking. It's really promising though. It's just such a shame it's bricked up. The potential behind this wall is unimaginable really. Tragically, we didn't find a separate route to reach the opposite side of the concrete wall, where we were pretty confident was a small air raid shelter that had never been uncovered on camera. This concluded the fascinating basement of the building, so we soon headed back above the surface. More really nice doors. Look at this room. Oh my. The wood is so reflective. Must have been an office for someone very important. Wow. Okay, I did not expect this. It's a shame about all the construction. But that ceiling is... Unbelievable. Got golden lanterns hanging down. 
You can see it's peeling too. Such a shame. These original rooms were very impressive, each featuring their own rare assets. The very 60s wooden office showing gorgeous woodwork and arched windows, with the lobby presenting a magnificent ceiling and what was once a marble staircase. People that died in the First World War. What a shame. Not for the building, but just for me personally. I would love to see how this staircase really looks. It seems like it's all covered up. It does overlook the foyer though. See, they have mirrors on all sides of this place. It makes the ceiling look bigger than it actually is. Still a very, very nice room though. So this is what the floors look like. You can still see hints of old, but clearly wall partitions have been taken off. These were all supposed to be individual meeting rooms and there is just one long room now. Same again, on every floor, and by the looks of it, I feel like it's going to get worse before it gets better. You can see the transmit routes they've been using to either strip the building or take out asbestos. And this is what the results are. Quite a nice boardroom here. Seems like one of the only furnished spaces left in these upper floors. Sadly, the majority of the upper levels had been stripped of anything unique, so we skipped a number of them to reach that ever so promising skylight. Well, it's been a big push. Going up these six, seven, eight stories, um, knowing that each floor barely has anything on it. But I think this will make it slightly more worth it. Wow. It's so colourful. Imagine this staircase in its heyday without all this protective stuff on it. And this would have been pretty magnificent. Once again, this was another unbelievable architectural trait of the bank that exhibits its historic value, one of many across the entire complex. It must offer so much potential to a property developer, particularly in its busy position of consistent revamps. It's just the highest level, and the skylights are out in full effect. Oh yeah, the architecture here is really nice. There's more skylights. Look 
how much decay is going on here. Seems to show that the building hasn't been abandoned for a little amount of time, especially with these upper floors. I feel like these have been closed off for a while. But yeah, that just about does it. We're gonna head up onto the roof, but there isn't really much else to see. The highlights are definitely downstairs. From the picturesque rooftop, we had a spectacular view of Manchester as the sun was starting to go down. The city, like many, is always changing, leaving old structural designs behind for new modern ones. Hopefully with the banks still standing prominently alongside all these fresh skyscrapers, it is a sign that its refurbishment is desired and coming shortly. With a lot of the building empty, but lacking much deterioration, the effort required for it to be up and running again is nothing compared to some places we have seen. If the restoration does continue, we would love to return to the structure in the future. Our visit had come to an end, and we imminently vacated the premises, glad that we had gotten the chance to witness the building's stunning features in person. We hope that you enjoyed our documentary, and feel that we did the structure justice. If you did, feel free to like the video to show your support. Here are some of our photographs from the abandoned bank. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I hope everybody is having a great start to 2023 and those that have received their copies of our magazine are enjoying reading through. See you next time.